Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I have three Rieslings in front of me, three different countries, uh, because we're in the middle of 31 days of Riesling, uh, July 2017. Uh, I don't know if it's just, just the UK that's doing it, or is it around the world? Whatever it is, it's still 31 days of Riesling. Uh, we are towards the end of July, I must confess. I should probably have done this video um, uh, a week or so ago, but hey, I'm doing it now. What is it about Riesling that gets its fans so excited? Uh, if I have to use a word for it, it would maybe be its honesty. What you get in the vineyard comes through in the finished wine. Uh, if you're growing something like Chardonnay, there's a lot of uh, winemaking jiggery pokery that you can do that can tart it up a little, little, little bit here and, uh, uh, and tweak it a little bit there. But with Riesling, what happens is you grow the grapes, pick the grapes, ferment the squidge them, ferment the juice, uh, maybe let it settle for a little while in a, a large inert barrel or unglamorous stainless steel, steel tank and um, then shove it in a bottle and that's it. So if the, the character that, that was in the vineyard hopefully gets through to, um, uh, to being in the bottle. Um, if, there, if, the, if the vineyard didn't have much character in the first place, um, well... I should uh, probably a couple of things uh, that maybe the growers would have switched to other other grapes that are a little bit easier to uh, put their thumbprint and certainly their footprint on. Um, the other thing is that then because of that, those who do stick to Riesling think, well, actually, I like Riesling. My vineyard gives good Riesling, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a good job with it and um, make sure its star shines. So let's try these three wines and see whether Riesling's star shines. I'm going to sort them out into alcohol order. I've got a, uh, an Australian one, uh, a German one, and a New Zealand one. So um, let's, if we're going to do it by alcohol orders, what order would you think that they should go in? I'm just going to do a little... <whistles> or probably that way around for the way you're looking at the camera. Um, but actually, so how it goes, um, the, the, the lowest alcohol is the Australian one. And the highest alcohol is the German one. Uh, they're not, there isn't all that much difference. We're going 11 and a half uh, for the Aussie, 12 for the New Zealander, 12 and a half for the German one. Uh, but all um, pretty, uh, I think they're going to be dry Rieslings. Maybe, they, maybe there's a little bit of stuff in the, uh, a bit, little bit of sugar in the, uh, in the New Zealand ones. You'll notice a, a little bit has gone from the bottle. That's, it was opened about 10 minutes ago. I'll tell you why when I get to it. But anyway, without further ado, let's get on to the uh, Australian one. Uh, the Australian one is, um, well, it's Aldi's uh, exquisite collection, uh, Riesling uh, from the Clare Valley in, uh, uh, in, in South Australia, uh, weighing in at 11.5% alcohol and made for them, I think, by Taylor's Wines, uh, also known as Wakefield. So let's give this one a whirl. There's something about... Um, young Clare Valley Riesling that reminds me of um, appley candy floss. There's a uh, lightly candied edge to this um, apple spume. Um, it's a, almost a flavour I get in, in, in some Prosecco, but uh, if, you're, if you're thinking about Prosecco and you're thinking, oh, it's going to be soft and friendly, there is also this um, backbone. It smells, it smells like it's going to have a, a, a lovely zesty lemon and lime edge to... Um, uh, to hold all the flavours together. It's still a, a young wine. It feels like that those those flavours are being yeah encased really nicely by this um, framework of acidity. And um, well, I better taste it, haven't I? Yeah, nice steely edge there. What do I what do I mean by steely? Um, it just feels like there's a, a a framework. It's got high cheekbones. Um, there is a juicy edge. There is um, this slightly almost plummy character. Uh, Victoria Plum, I never think of that as being a characteristic of Riesling. But then these, um, uh, these citrusy flavours and uh, that touch of uh, the apple spume. Um, but also there's a characteristic that I'm left with on my tongue. It's almost as if, um, if you've ever licked river pebbles. If you haven't, well if you have you probably, you probably need to, a little bit of therapy for that. But uh, yeah, there's this a stony quality about it. It also feels like it's a wine that's still really tightly curled up and will need time to blossom. So I'll give it another shake and uh, see, see if anything else comes on before moving on to the next one. Very tasty wine, but young and um, almost a wine that if I were to, I, I'd very, very happily go to Aldi and buy six bottles of that and drink it with pleasure over the next um, five, even 10 years. 
but um, uh, if I were opening a bottle now, I'd, I'd almost open it on Thursday to drink on a Friday. I think that um, uh, the, the, the framework is, will slowly loosen over that 24 hours. Uh, yeah, white wine to decant. Right, wine number two. Um, so this is Villa Maria um, Private Bin Riesling from Marlborough 2016, weighing in at 12% alcohol. Um, the reason it, it, it was opened, I've been doing, I've been test driving a wine preservation system called Zish with different bottles of this wine over the course of uh, several weeks. So this was my control bottle I opened 10 minutes ago to, uh, to see how it compared against these ones that have been through different preservation systems. I'll give it a whirl and tell you what I think of it. And this is a softer, rounder, uh, juicier, um, less less bracing smell than, uh, than the Clare Valley one. It says on the back label, uh, a touch of residual fruit sweetness offset by racy acidity. You always get this tension in, uh, in Riesling. Um, these, these all I, I would probably qualify for the word dry. Maybe, maybe not this one, but um, uh, with dry wines, what you sometimes have is the producers will leave a little touch of sugar in there, but because of this zestiness, you don't notice it. And uh, so when I smell this, there is that, slightly more exotic, uh, getting into the, uh, uh, if it, there is some citrus there, but it's that crystallised orange, bit of honey there. Um, it, yeah, it smells like a, it's going to be a fuller wine, maybe a simpler wine. Yeah, soft, juicy, um, a touch of um, apple crumble. Um, the apples that I was getting in that, that first one here, uh, they are sweeter, riper apples, and um, they are either those ones that have started to shrivel up, uh, or they've been ever so lightly cooked. Not, we're not talking uh, tart tatau. Maybe a large lump Bramley apple crumble. So a touch of sweetness in there. Maybe even a touch of rhubarb. But um, it's um, it, it's strange in terms of the two wines. The first one has this. Uh, it, it, it is it is bone dry, uh, and I would want that almost in the, those with those uh, with shellfish and uh, the things that you squeeze lemon on ceviche. That would be lovely with ceviche. Here, with that extra richness, touch of sweetness, that's one I'd be getting out with my lightly spicy Asian dishes. Wine number three. Um, so, this is Dr. Lozen, 2015, uh, Riesling Dry Red Slate. Um, it's not from a particular vineyard, but it's from a set of vineyards in uh, the Mosul region, where red slate is the, is the dominant soil. What have they said on this? Quite versatile at the dinner table. Not versatile, quite versatile. Uh, perfect uh, with shellfish, fresh oysters, sushi and grilled fresh fish. I'm salivating at the thought of that. That's just what I want to drink and uh, um, a, a slightly soggy Tuesday afternoon in the Pennines. Anyway, let's give it a whirl. Well, it's um, six months older than the previous two, so they were Southern Hemisphere 2016s here, Northern uh, hemisphere 2015 um, and um, it's it, it's interesting compared with the uh, the two previous ones it take it's got a little bit of the richness that I was getting in the New Zealand one and a little bit of the um, not quite the same type of stony character that I was getting in the first one it seems to have a broader spectrum of flavors uh, the other two were yeah they, they had good intense flavors but maybe not as many of them as there are going on here here it feels like lots and lots of little bits of flavour rather than just one or two big flavour spikes. Um, so there's, um, uh, there, there is a little bit of uh, stony mineral character, but there's also a little bit of more bassy earthiness. Uh, so it's got the high range and it's got the low range. And um, it feels, it, when I, I, I smell it, there's a little bit of, um, uh, of, of sulphur hanging around. It feels like it's a wine that, well, just released from its screw cap, would benefit from um, from certainly pouring out now. What, what time is it now? Four o'clock, or something like that. Um, yeah, if it, it may be a good time to open it now and uh, um, uh, for, for for drinking this evening. It feels like um, yeah, it's got quite a lot to still to give. Anyway, better taste it. Toasty edges, sweet fruit, plummy guava, uh, bit of citrus. This earthiness, something almost metallic. Um, a slight spiciness, um, not quite Gewürztraminer-like spiciness, and then um, 
something creamy. It's, it's, it's very strange. I never think of Riesling as being a, a grape with creamy characters, but there is a, a real richness of texture, certainly compared with the, um, um, with, 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 the, with the Australian one. The Australian one is quite stark. Uh, here, uh, it's, more, it's more expansive and uh, uh, yeah, more, it, it's a more intense wine. And um, but um, yeah, it's almost as if the uh, uh, maybe the 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 Aldi one is a, a three piece band, and here we have got a little bit, a uh, few more members of the of the combo. Uh, it's it's very tasty. I'm going to go back and have some more. Oh, and that lovely zesty limey acidity all the way through it. But it's not it's not simple wine. It's um, juicy, layered, um, and um, has me smacking my lips and thinking I want some uh, shellfish, fresh oyster, sushi and grilled fresh fish. Hey, a good, good fish and chips with that, I would monster it. Uh, in small amounts, but maybe a, a, a monsters, one of those little monsters from Monsters Inc. rather than a major monster, but lovely wine. Um, I mean, my favourite uh, in, in terms of uh, them, uh, yeah, that's my way my favourite. Then uh, the, the other two are closer together. Probably just prefer the... Um, the dry zestiness of the the Aldi one, but um, um, it's uh, I mean all three of them really nice wines, just that the the Lozen really does stand out, and uh, uh, so that's the one I'll be heading for today. Ideally, if I can find some uh, grilled fish, sushi, and all the rest of the stuff. If I can't, hey, I'm off to the chippy. See you soon.